Hi, you guys. Welcome back to another episode of First Impression Friday. Today, we're going to be taking a look at McCall's fall collection. If you are new here, welcome. This is my series where I review entire sewing pattern collections, whether it's seasonal from the big four or an indie patterns entire catalog. Um, if it's your first Inside the Hem video, uh, welcome. Please leave a comment introducing yourself so that I can get to know you a little bit better. And for everybody else, please make sure that you are subscribed, give this video a thumbs up, you know, all the usuals. All right, so let's jump right in. We have a little poncho. Interesting that they're starting off with outerwear. That's not normal, right? But either way, here we are. Uh, <laughs> we've got... Uh, two size categories here, or size options, extra small to medium, and then large to 2X. Pattern offers three poncho options, perfect to throw over any outfit. View A has placket with coat snaps and a belt for cinched waist. View B has contrast pocket, collar, and placket with no closures. View C has button, placket, and flap pockets. Say that five times fast. Okay, so this is the placket that they speak of. Um, that's an interesting detail. Normally ponchos have, you know, just a rounded collar, maybe a V. Um, this one having a little bit of like structure and construction here is fun. And I'm assuming this is meant for color or print blocking. Um, we've got a grown on sleeve, I believe. Baby hem. A little kangaroo pocket. Yeah, just your standard poncho design here. Now this one does have the belt where the belt actually goes through buttonholes that you make in the poncho, so it doesn't wrap around the width of all of this. I think it holds the back close to your body, but that's it. Um, I don't know how much waist definition you get from something like that, but and then this one also has this stand collar, which I feel like is different than the one we just saw. The line drawings will help with that. This one has flat pockets, the placket with the buttons, Here's the back. Yeah, I'm not the fan. I'm not the biggest fan of the three plaids that they did choose, but I guess I could see it in. I don't know. I think I'm also just not the biggest fan of ponchos. Like they just seem really fussy to me, especially if you were to wear one in flannel over a cotton turtleneck, that's just sticking to itself all over the place. And I just feel like I'd be tugging at it all the time. I'm just, not, yeah, I'm not, I'd rather just wear a sweater <laughs> or an actual coat. Um, but if ponchos are your thing, I guess this one's as good as any, right? I mean, how many times can you rewrite the same story? You know, like there are a gajillion poncho patterns out there. So I guess this one's new and interesting and different. Um, there are our line drawings. Here is the pattern envelope back. Wool blends, flannel fleece, and ripstop. I mean, maybe like a rain thing. I don't know. Even then, it just ended up in a ball in the back of my car. Uh, that, am I awfully cynical today or what? <laughs> We're already on pattern one and I'm like, meh. I'm so negative. Um, hopefully things will improve here shortly. I like when we start with the dresses because I always like dresses. Um, okay, so your notions are five medium snaps, five buttons. Here's the sizing, um, your body chart. Yeah, four yards of fabric? I don't know. I think there's much cooler things that I can do with four yards of fabric. And then they just give the length measurement because clearly, like, there's no real sizing here. Um, you don't have to be too specific about it. All right. So that's our first pattern. I'm glad we have that one out of the way. Here. So we are starting with outerwear. That, are there just no dress? No, there's dresses. Okay. All right. Be patient, Lindsay. We'll get to it. Okay. So this is a Palmer plush design by Melissa Watson. Um, it is a blazer and vest. Size options are 6 to 14 and 14 to 22. If you're not familiar with Palmer Plush, I think her name is Patty Palmer? 
Judy Palmer, <laughs> something like that. And then Melissa is her daughter. So Melissa uses the same, like Palmer plush is known for tissue fitting. Like they kind of like developed that idea of fitting the tissue on your body, making the alterations to the tissue and then transferring that to your muslin. Um, Melissa brings sort of a youthful type of spin to that concept. So you're still getting very tailored, um, garments, but the designs are just a little bit more contemporary, I guess would be the best word. Um, this is a lined button front blazer and vest combo adds instant polish to any outfit. Blazer has notch collar button on sleeves, pockets with flaps, shoulder pads, optional sleeve head and back vents. Vest has V neckline back buckled belt and welt pockets. So yeah, just as any good of a blazer as you would see in like Banana Republic, it does have like a shorter hem length. It hits at the, mm, I don't know, maybe between the high hip and low hip notch collar. I mean, if this were me, yeah, I guess, I mean, it feels like it's a little bit big for her here. I feel like she might have narrow shoulders. Um, and so it's a little bit long on her. And the sleeves are a little bit short on her. I also think this should be like maybe an inch or so longer. But the vest combo, what what do they mean by that? Is it all one? No. Here are some um, design details. We have a couple of different darts in the bodice. Is that right? Two part sleeve. There's the vest with princess sleeve and princess seams. No, they're separate. Okay. Separates, but you can wear them together. That's kind of cool. I do feel like the vest trend kind of came and went already. If this were last year, I'd be jumping all over this. Yeah, I mean, isn't that like a very well-fitting <laughs> garment? I mean, it looks really, really, really good on her, even though she's probably not even like their fit model, which is why you're getting a few little drag lines here. Might be a little bit wide through here, but I mean, everything else looks really exceptional. Here's the back of the jacket with the vents and then the buttons on the sleeve also. There's our line drawings. Or I'm sorry, the pattern front and then these are our line drawings. So yeah, you do have princess seams that go into a two-piece sleeve. You have these additional darting here. You have your back princess seams that open out into the vent. It might be a three-piece sleeve actually. I think it is. I think there's an underarm seam and a back seam. So really lovely. If you need a good, sharp looking blazer, why not get this one? Make the vest too. The vest you can dress up, dress down, wear it to work, wear it on the weekend. Wool blend, scabardine crepe and wool crepe. Um, lining fabrics and lightweight fusible interfacing. Buttons, shoulder pads, sleeve heads, which are optional. But so like the shoulder pads go here and the sleeve head goes in the um, cap of the sleeve to give that a little bit of structure. And then for the belt, you'll need a little buckle. We have body measurement chart here, two and a half yards roughly. And then you're lining and interfacing. The vest um, is just under one and a half yards. And then your finished garment measurements a is a lot roomier than the vest. The vest is very close fitting with only uh, four and a half yards of ease through the bust, but the uh, jacket has, well, four yards of ease in the vest, and then the jacket has five and a half, six? I'm not good at math. Five and a half. <laughs> so plenty of ease in the bust in both. The uh, waist has also uh, six inches of ease. So pretty close fitting garments there considering those um, ease allowances. Um, so be sure to double check, especially if you're in between sizes. If you're confused about how all of that works together, you can download my Fast Fit Workbook. I have it linked right here at the bottom. Just open up your phone's camera, point it at that QR code, and it will open right up for you. Um, and that's how I fit all my garments. Okay, now we have this fun little jacket. Yeah, okay, I get what they were going for with the fabric. Um, it's a pullover 
I'm sorry, an oversized puffer jacket, not pullover at all. I don't know why I said that. Includes side pockets, elastic cord and stopper at waist, elastic at sleeves and zipper and snaps closures. Underneath front band of jackets, like a hidden placket kind of thing. Um, view A includes a hood and contrast on sleeve sides, hood lining, front band and back yoke, which is what all of this is. So oversized puffer jacket. What, I mean, what are we doing? Putting batting in here? I get it. A very feminine take on what normally is just a bland, boring, like, um, almost athletic type of garment. This, I feel like will appeal to some people. It doesn't necessarily appeal to me, but I can see how some of you might like this fabric combo, especially if you're used, maybe that's it. If you're used to wearing if you need to wear these types of garments, maybe you live like in an area where it does get cold um, in like you actually have seasons within your season, which we just don't have here in Charlotte. Like we barely have seasons to begin with. Um, and you're used to the same old, same old, like boring colors, blue, black, you know, all that kind of stuff. I can see why you would think, oh, it'd be so fun to make my own so I could really do this fun stuff with the fabric. I just, I personally would never wear this, but I also don't have to wear jackets that much. Here's one all-in-one fabric with a stripe, still a print. Another crazy print. And then she put the hood on. She's got her thick, chunky boots on. Yeah, it reminds me of like something that like, Amy Butler or like some other quilting company would come up with, you know, to help sell more of their fabric. Here's the line drawings. It's very well constructed and well designed. I won't take that away from it. I just think that the execution with the fabrics is kind of taking away from that because they are recommending cotton blends, which is weird because like, well, I guess if you you couldn't wear it in the rain. You'd have to wear it just when it's cold. They do suggest nylon ripstop, which is not water resistant, but it is waterproof or vice versa. I get those confused all the time. Yeah, and then batting. Yeah, so you're just like stitching in some batting. I don't know. I mean, what are the fabric requirements? So for this one that's all broken up, if you were to use quilting cottons, which might be what they used, um, yeah, you'd need one and five eighths, one and three quarters, and one yard, since they're all 45 inch fabrics. I mean, maybe something cool with like Liberty Lawn or something. I don't know. But may, you know what? I could be convinced to like this. <laughs> I, what's convincing me is the construction. Uh, having all of these different seams is really interesting. Having that like um, covered button closure thing is interesting. I like this idea of the sleeve. I, I don't know about the batting. I'm guessing you're like spray adhering it and then stitching it in. So I don't know about calling it a puffer jacket. It's maybe kind of like also a bit of a nod to the whole like quilt coats that are happening, but, but a little bit more modern. I don't know. Like I said, one of you might make it and I see it and I'm like, you know what? That is pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Um, separating zipper, elastic, elastic cord, zipper stops, eyelets, and a sew on snap. So, I mean, this is not going to be a cheap jacket to make um so better not be on the fence like me <laughs> it's not one of those things you want to venture into if you're a little bit like i don't know i might like it i might not um would be fun and challenging and fun to see it come together though i think um all right so we went over fabric requirements if you want to just make it all in one but still have the pieced parts um you would need two and an eight and then if you want it all in one where it's like there's no separation at all, then it's two and a quarter. I do like how they included this. There have been patterns where I've come like this and I've tried to like, you know, tape them all together myself. It never comes out exactly right. So I like that they included just the plain, plain, plain version.
they say to refer to the English guide for finished garment measurements. Uh, I'm assuming that means the instruction booklet. Again, not helpful when you're trying to shop online, which clearly they are trying to get people to do. <sighs> <laughs> All I can do is sigh at this point. Okay, next we have this little number, which they are really trying to like hang their hats on. Um, this has been like part of the cover art and promotion for this whole collection, um, which makes me think that they think it's like the shining star. <laughs> okay, um, we have sizes 6 to 14 and 14 to 22 again. Learn to sew overalls with straps that fasten with purchased overall bucket, overall buckles. Okay, view A is a simple skirt overall without pockets or slit. View B and C have hemmed front slit and large front chest pocket, front side slit pockets, and back patch pockets. Overalls feature cross back side button closures and length variations. Okay, so it's an overall skirt dress thing. I don't not like it. Man, I am in a mood today. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. It's very wearable. I can see myself making this, reaching for it a lot, wearing it to Target, doing all the things. Again, maybe it's the style, like I, it's not even the styling because I don't mind the turtleneck and the booty. I don't mind all of that. I think maybe it's the white corduroy. Like maybe I'm looking for like more fallish colors here. Like where are the color trends? Where are those happening? I mean, that said, Chanel did just do like almost an entirely, if not entirely, black and white collection. So maybe I'm the one that's like behind on the times. I don't know. Um, then you have this like pencil skirt version that I think is knee length. Or maybe that one's knee length and the other one's mini. Um, you can see the slash pockets here. Oh, look at that. They really do cross over. So that gives like more of like an apron vibe man that's going to take up a lot of fabric all of this becomes fabric waste which i'm not too particular about but maybe it's also the top stitching on the white i don't know something about this feels like it looks homemade oh man okay so i think i really could like this in a different color i mean even like the chambray and the plaid they aren't really jumping out at me either um, but if it were full on denim, like a traditional overall, would that look even more? Oh, I don't know. But it is a learn to sew pattern, which I really appreciate those being a sewing teacher to many people who want to learn how to sew garments. Um, I do have a lot of respect for the learn to sew collection. Um, this is a level three though. So, you know, you got to work up to it. There's a lot of top stitching here. The hemming, I'm sure, is a thing. The buttons are definitely a thing. Um, so some things to contend with here. But they're telling you that you're going to learn overall buckles, pockets, and sew an extension, which is kind of like a um, vent. Yeah, and you do have these little, like, back darts, which are pretty cool. Huh. Sometimes the line drawings kind of make me rethink the whole thing. I could, I, I could, <laughs> I could, and I bet it would be fun to make. And like I said, I know I would wear it. I love these one piece things so much. Um, denim twill corduroy and cotton blends, some interfacing, overall buckles, jeans, buttons, six to 22 body measurements. I mean, around two yards of fabric. Well, except for the long one, you would need two and five eighths, definitely because of these back pieces for sure. This is all chopped up, so that's not that big of a deal. Center front seam. This with all of this is definitely what's causing all of this to, I'm surprised they didn't just put a seam here, but I guess I get why they didn't. All right, and so then the finished garment measurements, they give us the hip, which I totally agree with. That's really all that we need to know in order to make the purchase, not necessarily to fit it to ourselves, but to know what size to buy of the pattern. Um, and it goes from 37 to 50 and a half, which gives us a four and a half inch ease. So 
very close fitting through the hip. So if you like a looser fitting garment, I mean, this is going to fit like a pencil skirt would. Um, so keep that in mind. If you have, you know, wider hips that are truly wide left to right, you would make a bigger size. But if you have like a bubble butt and that's what creates your fullness at your hip, then you would need a full seat adjustment. So a couple different ways to go there to get the circumference that you would need, but you want to make sure you're allocating the space and the fabric to the right places. Okay. So there's that. I want to like it. That's the thing. Maybe that's what's holding me back is that I want to like it, but something about it is just kind of like, hmm. All right. We've got this cutie little number. So this is going to be a women's that we're looking at now. And then the next listing will be the same exact dress in the misses sizing. So I think it's a knit dress, right? Fitted front, fitted twist front dresses have different lengths and sleeve variations. View B and C have front slit. I'm going to skip to the back so that I can make sure that this is definitely for knits. Two way stretch, 50% such as Jersey interlock stretch velvet C stretch gauge. Okay. So two way 50% stretch across the grain line. Okay. So got that, got that. Perfect. So we've got a, I think they did this in a rib knit. Okay. So we've got like a sweet little V here. I'm assuming finished with a facing, not hundred percent sure on that grown on sleeve, which looks like maybe it was unhemmed. That's interesting. And then you got the twist front thing, which is super flattering on, I think, every single body type. I can't imagine one that it wouldn't flatter. You just got to make sure that this knot is at the smallest part of your body. And if you are fuller chested, if you're petite, if you're plus size, this smallest part of your body ends up being fairly high up on your torso. So just look for that, check for that, shorten this if you have to. Then you've got a center front seam, obviously, to make the twist. They opened it into a slit. And then the bottom is hemmed. Maybe the sleeves are hemmed. I just can't see it because we can't zoom in very close. Yeah, they are. Okay. So this is a still a grown-on sleeve, I think, but just longer. I mean, that's like a full-on gown, if you ask me. I mean, you could make that out of some really special fabric and have like a legitimate gown. And it is not hard to sew. These things are easy. The The twisting part seems complicated, but it's really just like matching parts across from each other, like an X. It's It comes together easier than you would realize. Here's the back. Okay, so this is kind of what I was talking about. Her waistline is way up here. You can even see that there's like a little fold that's creating there. This is way too long on her. And that happens to me even, and I'm not a petite or a plus size person. Um, I don't have a fuller chest. I just have a short torso. Um, so double, double, triple check length in addition to your width. But it is a really sweet dress that you could make in a million different fabrics to wear to a million different occasions. Yeah. I mean, it's great. It's great. If you've got like a large knit collection that you're just like, I don't know what to do with this stuff. This would be a great pattern to use it up on. Okay. So we went over that. You just need a little bit of elastic. Um, it does take three, three and a half yards. The twisty thing. I mean, look at all of this that's being gathered into one little area. So it does take up quite a bit of fabric plus the grown on sleeve. Um, and then the bust has two inches of ease. Remember this is a knit fabric. Okay. So it's meant to kind of be stretching over the curves of your body. Um, the waist is one and a half inches and the hip is also only two inches, which perfectly reasonable to me for a knit dress. Like I said, the next version is for misses. Same exact thing. Here it is in more of like a holiday type of even like new year's. I mean, genuinely you can make this dress out of 
so many different fabrics to wear it literally anywhere. Um, you could wear it to the office and a New Year's party. Like, I don't know two things that are like further apart from each other. Nightclub and a business meeting. You know what I mean? Like you could wear it to church, <laughs> you know, and then also like go clubbing. I mean, that's the, I mean, yeah. So love this one. Very versatile. I love a good versatile pattern and flattering, super flattering on lots of people. Okay. This is another kind of version of that with the, you know, ruching across the midsection. This one is very, I guess, chic shall we call it? Very modern, very kind of alien-esque with all of the asymmetry going on. Shapely, asymmetrical cutout dress features tuck and gathering details. Dress comes in length and sleeve variations. View A has bishop sleeves and elasticized cuffs. Views B and C have contrast and leg slit. Sizing is 6 to 14 and then 14 to 22. So far, it's been the same across the board, except for the women's pattern. Okay, so we've got a high neckline with a facing into this cutout, which I'm assuming also has some kind of facing. You've got a dart here, which is just way too high, maybe because she has her arm, her hand on her hip. But isn't that the other one over here? I mean, her bust apex is here, so it's not only high... Well, it's not very long. It's fine. And this seam should be completely underneath her breast tissue. So if you were to move this down, this would be in the right place. So that's okay. But then you've got this ruching detail, which is kind of like a gather into a seam. Into a seam. They did say tucks and gathers, though. And I'm not sure I see necessarily any tucks but a close fitting sleeve as well. And it comes down. It means sewing this seam here and having it be like, when we see the line drawing, you'll see the intention of this is to be like not wavy. Um, but it's just hard to execute that, especially on whatever kind of silky crepe fabric they used. Mad props to their sewing department. Well, maybe that little dart is supposed to go funky. But there it is in kind of like a print. And then that's the bishop sleeve with the um, elasticized sleeve. Yeah, I don't know about this design in this print. I feel like they're trying to make it a little bit more <laughs> less sexy. <laughs> but I don't know. It just feels like two different women. Like I don't think the, women that, the woman that wears this slit is going to be making or buying this fabric. Am I wrong? Do any of you out there feel like you would make that version? Here's the long version, which I think is probably the intention for this to be more of like a gown. Um, but you can see what I was talking about with the seam here supposed to just come straight down, but it's just impossible to not get that little curvy thing. Um, yeah, it's cool. I have nowhere to wear this. Um, nor would I, I just don't think I would spend the time even trying to execute this. And that, honestly, like I know a lot of you guys are gonna look at this and think, oh my God, look at all of these like puckers and like weird lines. I mean, genuinely they did an exceptional job considering the fabric that they were given. Like this fabric is just no fun to sew with. So I wouldn't sew it out of something like this. I don't think it'd be flattering on my body type. It'd be difficult to sew. So many reasons why I'm just like, no, I'm gonna just leave this one alone. It's for somebody else. <laughs> but I mean, it's cool, right? I mean, all the design lines are very, very interesting. I love the asymmetrical fisheye dart. You know, all of that about it is very neat. Um, just not for me, my lifestyle, the patience I have, all of those things. But I know that those of you that do make it, I mean, it's going to be a fun make and you guys are going to be looking like a million bucks. Um, Charmeuse, that's probably what they used actually. Um, Shally crepe stable knit. I might attempt it with like a ponty, like a lightweight ponty, but that would be the closest that you would find me in this. And even that, I don't know that I want like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So fabric requirements, two and a half, one and seven eighths plus contrast. 
but they don't say oh this is the contrast okay um and then c the long one again with the contrast okay and then the e's is roughly two inches in the bust um, three and a half inches in the waist and three and a half inches again in the hip. So yeah, very close fitting, um, especially for a woven non-stretch fabric. So just keep all those in mind. If you're like drawn to this design, you're like, oh my God, I love that. I have to have it for this event or whatever it is. Just fabric choice is going to make or break your sanity um, when it comes to sewing this. Okay. So now we go from this to this. Two very, very different women here. Um, this is a shirt dress. Button down collar dress has length and sleeve variations. View B is sleeveless with bias tape at armhole. View C has long sleeves with cuffs. Again, it just feels like... The fabric choices are just so bizarre. Are they like maybe cutting corners, buying like clearance fabric or trying to use up like some kind of fabric stash that they have. And although it's not like their first choice, they're like, it's good enough. And so they just hand it off to the sewing department because like this fabric with this shoe is weird, right? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, mm, I don't know. Something, just something about all, all of these. Just, it's not laying, it's not landing perfectly. Like, it's not, I'm not seeing these and going, ooh, yeah, absolutely have to have it right off the bat. You know how, like, I don't know, maybe like five or so years ago, we were seeing, like, um, the pattern covers and we were, making exact replicas of the pattern covers. I don't see that happening with this. But I think when we get to the line drawings, we'll see just how interesting this is. I think you have like a panel in here and then this is all completely separate. Again, very kind of alien-esque. Um, we have the button placket, the collar with the collar stand, gathered skirt, Maybe some pocketing. I don't know. This one's midi link. Okay, here is a version with the sleeve, um, which looks very basic. It feels like Brooks Brothers. Um, classic. You know, I'm fine with this. Yeah, okay. So here is the version with the little, I'm going to call it a bib. I don't know what else to call it. But where you have those princess seams in the version we just saw, you attach this little extra thing that stands away from the body. Um, I think it's cool. I think it's interesting. Again, fabric choice is going to make a big difference. And I don't think that this mini gridded plaid is it. Um, I see it much more minimalist. Um, uh, maybe the plaid and the design are like, are like competing with each other or something. Um, but I see it in a solid fabric, something very stable, even a linen. Um, yeah, I mean, this is like a hard edgy type of design, which is why I think they pulled these boots for it, which makes sense. But the, with the fabric and these white buttons, I don't know. It's just something's just off about the the styling okay but here is the design it looks whack in the line drawings right like it looks weird it looks like it looks like a dicky on top of a dress <laughs> so I get that it looks strange but I could see it being really cool um I think you have to have the you know it has to you have to have an edgy type some kind of edge to your personality um, to your style, to the things you'd like to wear. Um, I think if you're someone like me who likes bows and ruffles and all of those things, it might be one of those that's like, oh, I, I wouldn't ever picture you in something like that, which is fine. Um, but it's definitely going to come across very modern, um, even galactic, <laughs> dare I say. 
Um, but it's cool. It's different. It's unique. It's not like any patterns that we normally see. So that's good. Poplin, cotton blends, linen, and lawn. Yeah. Um, buttons and bias tape. And then interfacing. Yeah, it really does eat up a lot of fabric. With the gathered skirt plus the extra panel um, panels for the front and back, yeah, it's a bit of a fabric hog. Uh, finished garment measurements, it's going to be pretty roomy. Yeah, we have six and a half inches of ease in the bust. I wish they would have given us the waist measurement too, just because it is a close-fitting waist. But uh, base your size off your bust, I guess. Best you can do. Yeah, for like an interesting take on a shirt dress, sure. Okay, next we have, oh Lord, okay. What are they calling this? A dress and a shrug. Oh, wow. Okay, um, okay. A sizing first, <laughs> 4 to 12 and then 12 to 20. So they are opting to give you the smaller size rather than the 22. So they're giving you the size four instead of the size 22, which means to me that they are picturing a younger demographic making this, wearing this, um, because inherently those women are, I'm, when I say younger, I mean like teenager. Um, so that's the only reason I can think that they would include a size four on this, none of the other ones, and then also take away the 22. I just, I mean, why else? Unless, I mean, unless it couldn't fit a 22 on the pattern paper. So they just decided to throw in the smaller one. Maybe that is it. Maybe that, maybe I'm overthinking it too much and it really just has to do with like economics of pattern tissue. I don't know. Um, cause it does feel like a very matronly design. Like, I don't know my, any, any of my Gen Z friends are going to be like, yes, I must, I must have this shrug. Um, dress and shrug can be styled in multiple ways. Okay. Views A, B, and C are different style of shrugs. View A has a turtleneck with long sleeve. View B has a cross front. View C has a turtleneck and crossover. Dress comes in two links and has V-neck in front and back. Okay. For Now, for this example, I actually kind of really like this fabric a lot. I think that the bronze is really kind of cool. It's still shiny, so it's, you know, kind of glam. I just don't know about the, the shrug. It's giving like a, if you had like a raglan grown on full sleeve. So that's not abnormal. We've seen a lot of that lately. I'm trying to think if you told me that it was one piece, would I like it more? No, I think, it, <laughs> I think it has to do with this. This feels very like, Oh, I just want to pull it off my neck. Right. Doesn't it feel very like constricting and like straight jackety? I don't know. That one a little bit more simpler. And then that's the crossover. I don't know. The dress is beautiful, simple. I wish it were bias cut. I do. I like the dress. I like the dress a lot. Um, yeah, dress is getting very 90s. And again, it's one of those that you could make in a gajillion different fabrics and wear it to all kinds of different places. The shrug thing, I don't know. She's wearing B and D. B and D are, oh, we haven't gotten to the line drawings yet. B, okay. So she's wearing the most twisty. Also, is that hard to put on? <laughs> I guess you put your arms in first or do you put your head in first? I don't know. Um, ah, yeah, I, yeah. I can't imagine the shrugs take a lot of fabric. Maybe I should try it before I knock it. Knock it before you try it, you know? Because maybe, but like, if you're not making it in fabric that's the exact same, is this like, you make it out of like, so let's say I had like a summery dress or even like a fall dress. 
that was sleeveless in some kind of like floral print. Do I then go grab like a sweater knit and make it look like a separate pullover? Like a, like imagine a dress with a cardigan. You know how like you mix and match your cardigan to your dress, but the, one of the colors is the same or whatever. Is that the same? I mean, I appreciate how they styled this for once in this collection, but I'd like to know other ways. More casual ways, ways where the fabrics aren't the same. Um, so yeah, it is for stretch fabrics, jersey interlock, cotton knit, sweater knits. Four to 20, we've been over that. Body measurement, yeah, the shrugs are like one yard wonders. Oh, but B, with all the, the most, the extra one, is two yards, one and a half, one and three quarters, and then the dress, oh, one and three quarters for the dress. <laughs> I love how the, this takes just a quarter yard more than this. That's the thing, too. Some of these, like, trendy things that I, I don't know if I'm going to wear forever take so much freaking fabric. All right, so the dresses are, yeah, half an inch of negative ease in the bus. So this is truly, it's got to be stretchy. I, and I wish on the other one, they said what percentage of stretch. On this one, they're not including that, which is annoying. Um, the waist has three inches of positive ease and the hip has three inches of positive ease. Okay. Oh, okay, here is, oh, but they did the same thing. I was gonna say, here's the women's version, but they literally made the same shrug in a different dress, and that's not helping. Golly, I mean, yeah, I wish they would have taken this opportunity to do something different. Again, though, doesn't the dress look amazing? Like, the dress is a good dress. Um, Lord, yeah, no, that's not it. <laughs> That is actually a different, wait, she's wearing C. That's supposedly C and the last girl was wearing B. Oh, it is C. Well, that's not great. I don't know, you guys. I don't know. That's, that's, un, um, whereas I might have been convinced with the last one, this white on white version in a more casual fabric. I get that. If you love this, leave a comment. Maybe I, I want, again, I want to like it. Leave a comment telling me what I might be missing because I want to like it so much. I just feel like these two, like, tell me what you would make it out of, you know, like, cause these two versions aren't it, but I do love the dress, love the dress so much. Okay, so now we have our little vintage dress and belt. Okay, um, sizing options are 6 to 14 and then 14 to 22. Vintage sewing patterns, 1930s dress has slightly flared bias skirt. Love that. With buttoned waist front. Okay, gathers in side. Why are there so many words in a vintage pattern description? Button waist front gathers in side waist front sections create fullness in bust line. What? Gathers in side waist front sections. Oh, I don't even know what that means. Dress has small round collar or tie collar, short sleeves gathered at shoulders with or without sleeve band and side placket for snap closing. Huh? I mean, this is what they mean by the side front panels with gathers. Great fullness. Okay, I get that. There's got to be a better, more simpler way to explain that. Then you've got a button front. And then you've got a side something or another to get into it. Because the, the buttons don't extend all the way down. I mean, this is pretty cool. I do like that. Um, and I love the bias skirt. What is she eating? What is, what is that? Oh, she's smelling the roses. Okay, got it. 
<laughs> Line drawings. Yes, please help me. Okay. So, oh, the little neck um, darts are cute. Sleeve gathers with or without bands. These little boob holsters. <laughs> but in front placket. And then something for your side. Like something in, happening in the side so that you can get in and out of it. And then you have this self belt. Um, crepes, linen, lightweight woolens, PK. Oh, I haven't seen PK in a suggested fabric in a minute. Um, lightweight fusible, hook and eye, two snaps, six buttons, single fold bias tape, hem tape, buckle, snaps. Yeah, all the things. Um, it also has seven inches of ease in the bust. That feels like a lot. Um, the waist has two and a half inches of ease. Seven or six and a half inches in the bust? I don't know. I was thinking maybe four or five. I don't know about six and a half. Those of you that make vintage patterns on the regular, are these updated, like, a 1930s pattern? Like, women's bodies have changed a lot in the last 90 years. Like, we're not as petite as we used to be. Our shoulders are a little bit more broad. You know, not to mention just our size in general. But, like, our builds are a little bit different. Do you find that you have to, like, do broad shoulder adjustments a lot and things like that on dresses that are fitted? Just out of curiosity. Like, are these adjusted to today's pattern block? I guess is the question. Or do they literally just reprint it, repackage it, and send it out the same way it would have gone out to a woman in the 1930s? That's my question. All right, this cutie little pullover. Finally, something that I see and I can picture myself wearing it just as is. And she, even, she looks happier in this photo than all the other photos. Comfy and trendy pullover top goes well with any outfit. I mean, I don't know about that. <laughs> That's a bold statement. View A is a sweatshirt with half zip front and elastic cord hem. View B has a half button up front and kangaroo pocket. View C and D have lapel v-necks. View D includes hood and stitched hem. So many options. Okay. So, half zip. A little stand collar. Simple sleeve gathers into a sleeve band. Simple straight hem. Then we have the button up version of that with the kangaroo pocket. Oh, we have this version. Kind of feels a little bit like Mr. Rogers meets Gen Z. <laughs> um, there's this one, which why did they just pull the collar down? I have to see if those are two different ones or not. Oh, she has the one with the corded um, hem. I don't know what I think about the corded hem. Like, having this little thing dangling feels like... I mean, I'm clumsy enough. I don't need little just things, loops especially, just hanging off my body to catch onto literally anything at any moment. Including myself, my own things. Like, yeah, C and D are different. What did they say about D? Oh, that's supposed to be a hood for D. Okay. Well. Um. Oh, yeah. D has a hood. I mean, that's kind of cool. I can kind of see a whole collection of myself. I can see myself in a whole collection of these. Um. Yeah, I like them. I think they're cool. They're fun. They're easy, casual, warm. Stretch knits only, like sweater knits, fleece, sweatshirt fleece, and French terry. It, and then the zippers or cording or stoppers, depending on which version you make. Extra small to 2X, which translate to a... Bust ease of somewhere between six and a half and five and a half inches of bust ease. 
So for for um to make that make what am I trying to say? The last pattern, right, had six inches of ease in it, right? So does this pattern. So I don't see how that pattern shown. I mean, granted, we didn't see it on an actual body. We only saw it drawn. It's not computing in my brain how both of these things have the same amount of bust ease. So something, something's not right about that last pattern. You do not need that much fullness, especially because the back was super fitted. The front was fairly fitted too. Granted, you have all that room in the bust, but like, is it the, the, the gathers that like the little holstery part of the bodice? I don't know. I can't, I can't justify in my mind why there's so much ease in that one. But, and then yardage wise, yeah, two yards ish roughly, which, you know, fair for a long sleeve jumper type thing, especially D two and a half with the hood. Yeah. Next we have, okay. A simple little top. Mrs. Knit top. Okay. I made one of these last year that had just one of these going up the side and I do love it. This one with the two of them and the belly showing and the low rise pants. I mean, McCall's is supposed to be like the younger appealing, uh, fabric brand. I don't think we've seen that so far at all <laughs> until we get to this pattern. Remember when they did all that photo shoot out at like Coney Island or whatever? Like that collection is so different from this one. Like that girl is not going to be wearing some of these dresses. Like the, the alien bib dress. That girl is not, I don't know what, like, anyways, I digress. Um, Oh, alphanumeric sizing, so extra small to medium and then large to 2x, knit surplus top, so it does have a little wrap here, have length and sleeve variations, views A and B are cropped and have drawstrings, view C is cropped with elasticized cuffs, and view D is hip length with narrow hem. Do y'all remember the red version that I made last year with the one little thing? Um, yeah, so they use like a little rib knit and some ribbon. I mean, okay. Here's the plainest version. I mean, the line drawings do look a lot better. Maybe it's the ribbon. I don't know. Something about it is just like, again, something about it. How many times have I said that this video? Something about it is just not landing right. Because the line drawings aren't terrible. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm just off today, which I acknowledge at the beginning of this video. Maybe, maybe I'm in a mood. It happens. But I don't know. Something about all this stuff is just like, I don't know. Can't put my finger on it. Um, but knits, like jerseys, cotton knit, interlock, athletic knits. I don't know where you're, what kind of sporting event you're wearing this to or gym. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't go to a gym. So <laughs> not that I ever have it, but <laughs> I haven't lately. So I don't know what people are wearing in the gym. That's my point. Um, four yards of drawstring cord or twill tape. And then elastic for the sleeves. And yeah, half an inch, half an inch to one and a half inches of positive ease. Wait, sorry. Negative ease. I'm not doing my math correctly. Yeah, negative right. ease. And then yardage wise, we've got one and a half to one and five eighths. So roughly one and a half for all of them no matter which version you're making at the largest size. Those of you in the smaller size range can use a one and a quarter yards, like a one yard wonder. Um, but those of us at the top end up to one and a half ish. Okay. Now we've got lounge pants, top and hoodie. 
comfy lounge set includes contrast side panel details on top, hoodie, and pants. View A has bias tape to finish neckline. View B includes a hood and kangaroo pocket. Lounge pants C and D have side pockets and elastic and waistband. View C has back patch pockets and banded cuff. Maybe this stuff just feels like old. And I don't mean old like age, like our age. I mean old like not new and fresh and trendy. Like I don't see this in the stores anymore. Like maybe last year, two years ago, it would have been okay. I just, I'm not seeing it. Here's a leopard version. That's not helping. <laughs> oh man. Okay, here are our line drawings. So the only difference is, well, the line drawing make it makes it look cooler. Let me check out that sleeve again. It's just hard to see black fabric also. Like, haven't they learned by now? Yeah, here's the sleeve seam that comes way, way, way down to give more of like a bat wing. I mean, okay, that makes it more interesting. But only like barely. It's still not making me want to jump off my sofa and, and go buy this. And then the pants, I mean, what? I mean, okay. But the only real difference between the views are the hood and pocket. I'm using air quotes on the pocket um, on the top. And then for the pants, the only difference is back pants pockets, which, duh, obviously we know you can leave a pocket on or off. Like we don't need a separate view for that. But the only other difference is this um, hem, banded hem versus not, which again, like we get it. <laughs> So having those as separate views also feels, I don't know, shady. <laughs> I am in a mood. Okay, sweatshirt. When I start like accusing people of being shady for creating a separate view that has a cuff, that's when you know, man, Lindsay, try not to go out in public today. Do not interact with other human beings. Like <laughs> volatile, volatility going on in my brain today. Okay, sweatshirt, fleece, French terry, cotton knit, and velour. Yeah, I have been seeing some velour tracksuits coming back. Um, single fold bias tape. Elastic. Um, yeah, t uh, you have your main fabric and then a little bit of contrast. So roughly, gosh, two and a half yards of fabric, uh, just about, for each one. And then... Uh, six and a half ish um, inches of ease in the bust and a ton in the waist. So again, uh, why are we giving the waist finished waist here where it literally could not matter? Like even the hip matters more than the waist on this pattern, but on the pattern that has like a defined waist, they're like, yeah, we're just going to leave it off. I don't get it. Okay, now we're getting into accessories, children, menswear, um, costumes and stuff. So we're not going to be looking at all of these. We I'll just kind of go over the little zoomy things. But um, we have this bag here. It just feels huge. The design is cute enough with the fringe, but like, why is it so big? Um, or you can leave the fringe off. We have this men's button down or jacket, shacket. So again, very unisex, so, you know, anybody can make this. Um, but again, shackets, I mean, yes, they're still around, but didn't we all buy shacket patterns last year? Like, I've already got a shacket in the making. Um, I don't know. Okay. Then we've got kids' patterns. We've got these little stuffies. We've got aprons for these chefs in your life, either professional or not. And then we've got this cape. For a costume we've got this dress for a costume and we've got this han fu outfit i don't know what a han fu is maybe i should with my asian heritage but i don't um and that is it so wow you guys yeah really oh man really rough going um i can see why they chose this as their like you know best pattern because 
really, I don't see much. Like, this is a winner. Um, everyone should go buy this, especially because it comes in both of the size ranges. This is a maybe for some people. This is a maybe for some people. This is like, yeah, you know, it's popular on Amazon. So, and you know, you'd wear it because it's comfortable. But everything else, guys, I, yeah, this is one of their worst in a while, according to me. Um, if you liked these patterns, yay, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> I really am. Um, but this video is, I guess, I'm the only one giving my opinion here. So if you have an opinion that differs from mine, please, please, please leave it in the comment section. This is not supposed to be like, you know, Lindsay's just soapbox, um, especially when things don't go well. So um, would love to know what you guys think. Um, leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. We will always be nice. Remember, there is a human being behind these designs. So no need to like bash the designer herself, um, but maybe think of it a little bit more broadly as a, a collection, as a brand, as trends, as fashion, all of those kinds of things. All right, that's going to do it for me today, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you all very soon. Bye.